just got a bird or a hamster or something that squeaks and they leave it in the hallway. I can hear it all day. It's so annoying, but I guess it's kind of like living in the wilderness with birds in the trees and shit. All right, I'm about to chow down. I got some new Gymshark shirts. So I'm gonna try those on before I head out to the gym. It's chest day. Chest, try, some shoulders. I actually was a certified NASA personal trainer for two years but I got certified right before COVID happened. I never was really a personal trainer, except to myself. <laughs> I'm trying to get the motivation back. I'm trying to get really back. Fucking bird. I'm trying to get really into my fitness again. Definitely not easy. <laughs> my body has uh, not been extremely cooperative for the past year or so. Ever since COVID and working from home on the couch, my body just kind of fell out of whack. I was having a lot of problems. I went to a chiropractor, I went to a physical therapist, got foot inserts, because I have really big flat feet. It seems like every professional that I go to, they like don't really know what's going on and they try to help, but it doesn't really help. But lately, I feel like I've had some breakthroughs. It feels like my body is kind of like evening out. In the gym, I've had to kind of go back and lower weight and make sure that my form is really correct and also work on balancing and scoliosis exercises, <laughs> strengthening the lower back because my back got really weak during COVID because I spent so much time working from home and just working in like a nine to five setting in an office setting for three, four years in my early 20s. It really took a toll on my body. I'm pretty satisfied with the way that I look overall, but in the past month or two, the past couple of months, I've felt like, yeah, I, I do want to gain some muscle, just like 10 pounds. Black stringer. This is cute. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Happy about this. This pre-workout is called Woke. It's like Blue Raz. I also take creatine. If you're curious about what these supplements are and what they do, I will gladly explain if you just leave a comment.
that was a good workout. I feel good. I didn't do as much as I wanted to do, but thought I'd wrap it up because I have some other things to do today. I generally go home to stretch. So I finish everything up. I go home, get my protein, and then do some stretching and rolling out with the foam roller that I have. It's a good kind of cool down. It's a good de-stressor and it helps release a lot of the tightness in my muscles. So I'm on my way to do that right now. It is a hot day here in New York. It's supposed to be 95 degrees. I enjoy summer, but when it's this hot in the city specifically, and you can just feel the heat radiating off of the tar, ugh, off of the tar and the concrete, it's just miserable. This is my workout protein. It is clear whey isolate. It's still whey, but it's not like that dairy texture. It's not like creamy. It's more like juice. This is my first time getting it and I really, really like it. Start with a little thoracic. sore muscle, oh, just kind of hold it there, move it around, adjust it until you get that really sore spot, oh, and just sit there and wait. This is called self-myofascial release, or myofascial release. Myo means muscle, and fascial means like the connective tissue. So what this is doing is breaking up all of the kind of scar tissue, the connective tissue that adheres muscles. Basically you try to find these trigger points to release which can kind of improve mobility and improve pain. It's similar to massage but in some regards it's more effective. It really depends on what you're trying to do. When people work out a lot it tightens up the muscles because the muscle fibers break apart and over time this can really build up. If you have injuries it can be scar tissue. You have to be consistently breaking this down. I've struggled with this in the past just staying consistent, always doing my stretching, doing my myofascial release, doing my foam rolling. Such an important part especially if you're trying to grow muscle because your muscles that some point are not going to be able to grow if they're very tight. They have to be loose, they have to allow for mobility. It's just a really good practice and habit to form, not only in fitness and muscle gaining, but just feeling better all around. One of the biggest problem areas for tightness is your pec minor, right in here. The best way to do it is to put it on a door frame and put your pec minor, which is right here, put it up there and just hold it there for like 30, 60 seconds and do that three or four times, you'll feel it start to break down and get loose. A lot of people who have problems with posture from sitting down at work, from working in an office, is rounded shoulders. And the main cause of that is weak mid traps and really, really tight pec minors, which causes the shoulders to round because it's tight in here and really weak back here. So what you want to do is strengthen your mid and lower traps and release this area. And you will really notice a difference too. Just do it two, three, four times for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, however long you need. And you're going to start to feel it loosen up. I think it's so important to find a healthy balance with working out and kind of find something that works best for you, whether that be playing a sport like tennis for me or going to the gym or going on runs, anything that makes you feel good and alive and energized and motivated is a good thing to keep around, it's a good thing to make a habit of. And even though it can definitely get tiring when you're working out every day or every other day or even just like three times a week, if you're going to work and you're going to the gym or you're always trying to include that physical activity, it definitely can weigh on you sometimes. There's definitely times when I feel like, oh my gosh, I do not want to move. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to the gym. But always, without fault, every single time after I go to the gym, after I play tennis, I'm always just like, wow, I feel so much better. I feel energized. I feel relaxed. I feel like kind of like at ease. And that, I think, 
is just as important as the health benefits of working out. Because in reality, the mental aspect of it and what it does for your mental state is just as important to your health as are the physical benefits. I've definitely been trying to get back into that headspace of I enjoy working out, I'm actually doing work at the gym, I'm actually making progress instead of just being on my phone or lifting a few weights and being on the treadmill for five minutes and then leaving. Even though some days, <laughs> I will admit, some days I get to the gym and I'm like, not gonna do much, just here for half an hour and gonna do what I can and then I'm leaving. But it's definitely important to be making a plan for what your goals are, what you want to achieve, so that you can work towards that. Because there's been times in the past where I'm just like going to the gym, crushing weights, not really thinking about stretching, not really thinking about cardio, just kind of like blindly throwing myself at the gym. <laughs> that doesn't work. It might feel like you're kind of getting something done, but in reality, if you're not actually having a plan or if you're not actually working towards a goal, you know, things can get sloppy and messy. Setting goals, working towards them, and achieving them can be just as important as the mental aspects, as the physical aspects of going to the gym, of working out. It builds confidence, it makes you feel better about yourself, it makes you feel like, ooh, I'm sexy. <laughs> and not even that, maybe for someone else it's like, oh, I feel healthy, I feel really fit. But there are times that going to the gym, you know, can be a negative. If you're unhealthily obsessed with fitness and how you look, and it makes you feel anxious or paranoid about always wanting to look hot and always wanting to be muscular. If you're not funneling that gym obsession energy into some type of positive output, then apart from the physical benefits of going to the gym, the mental might actually be hurting you. It might actually be a negative. There's definitely a fine line between really being into fitness and taking all the positive mental aspects from it and also the negative side of obsession and creating body dysmorphia and some of those other negative aspects that might come out of it. From here on out, I'm gonna be doing some gym vlogs. I'm gonna be adding that to my content and just kind of showing you guys the workouts that I do, the different ways that I stay fit, how I try to mix it up. Yeah, hopefully it's something that y'all enjoy or get something out of or maybe <laughs> gives you some inspiration or maybe you can just laugh at me or correct my form, whatever. <laughs> I actually worked at Crunch for a few weeks when I first got my personal training certificate and it felt more like a salesman job. I was a trainer. It felt more like a salesman job than a personal trainer. And I just said, this is not what I'm looking for. It just felt too commercial. It felt like it was focused on money, 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 and not actually the well-being of clients or the fitness level. And I've thought about training people privately, but ever since COVID and trying to get back into my top physical form, I haven't really felt the confidence or the desire to train people just because I'm trying to work on myself first. If I can't get everything together for myself, how can I help someone else? Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.